Welcome to Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. In the next half hour, you'll obtain insights and tools to transform your life using the biblical principles found in the 12-step program. We believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience because we all have struggles in life. Struggles with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, and relationships to name a few. You'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through life recovery. Your host is Steve Arterburn, founder of New Life Ministries and Women of Faith, author of over 100 books, and teaching pastor at Northview Church in Carmel, Indiana, one of the 20 largest churches in America. Steve is the co-editor of the Life Recovery Bible, the number one selling recovery Bible. With over 3 million copies sold, this is the Bible given to inmates by Prison Fellowship and the Pew Bible for the Salvation Army. Now here's Steve. Hi there, welcome to Life Recovery Today. Steve Arterburn here, so glad you're with me. Here on Life Recovery, we are continuing to go through the steps. And we just did the fourth step last week, and I hope when you were doing that inventory that you remembered that part of that inventory is actually looking at how we've been hurt, not just people we've hurt, and what that did to us and the pain and what we lost and all the grief that we've been through. Now, why am I going through all that? Because I'm working that step. And uh, it's important that we complete it so that we'll be free. Well, today we're going to hear from our board-certified master coach, Daniel Grossman. Now, he's not only a coach, but he's a pastoral counselor, and he has a real passion for helping people and a tremendous understanding of the steps. So today, Daniel's going to help us explore this fifth step. And what a step it is, because all of the steps here, one, two, three, four, that we've gone over, well, they just involve you. But now we're going to open up and we're going to share and he's going to tell us how to do it so that we've got some great, great tools to move us forward in working the 12 steps. Here's Daniel. Hello, Daniel Grossman here. I am so honored that I get the opportunity to share with you today uh, about one of the steps in the 12 steps of recovery. Yeah, there's 12 steps, and uh, that almost seems like a lot. But I promise you, if you take one step at a time and put your whole heart into it and allow God to work through you, you will get through all 12 steps. Many people start with step one in their recovery process, and maybe they'll get to step two or step three. Uh, But many people don't go through all 12 steps. And that is really where the true healing and recovery comes. If we look at the steps one by one, I don't have that time to do all that, but I am going to cover one step in particular today, step number five with you. As we are progressing to step five in the 12 steps of recovery, step one, we admit that we are powerless over our problems and that our lives have become unmanageable. I think you may have come to that place, like I came to that place at one point in my life, where I realized that there were some problems that I couldn't control, that were beyond my control, and really became unmanageable and began to ripple into all parts of my life, affecting different parts of my life more drastically than others. But nevertheless, it was unmanageable. I could not control it. Then we became aware and to believe that there was a power greater than ourselves that could restore us to sanity, that that we could get back to a place more manageable and more sane. And we realized that there was a greater power. In my case, that greater power was the Lord Jesus Christ. I realized that he was, was working in me to heal me and restore me, but I had to work in partnership with him. And step number three, we made a decision to turn our wills over to the lives uh, and our lives over to the care of God. Again, I think a lot of people may get stuck in this place because they partly give a part of their heart, part of their will. Many people accept Christ as their savior, but many few uh, really make him their Lord. Um, Then step number four, we uh, made a searching and a fearless moral inventory of our lives. Many people may make this inventory in their mind and in their heart. Maybe maybe people begin to write it down and uh, begin to realize all the wrongs that they have done to uh, each other and uh, to others and to the Lord. And, and they made an inventory of that. 
However, uh, so many people get to that step four. However, many people, uh, when it comes to step number five, often get stuck. I would say many people get stuck at step number five because it really takes it from uh, just a place where it's in, you know, internal and only thinking about uh, what I've done and how I've harmed others. The first four steps really can be done privately, if you will, between you and God. And a lot of healing and restoration and recovery can take place there. But if you really are looking to get to the next level and really be, you know, be moving forward in the healing and recovery process, you have to undoubtedly do step number five. And step number five is that we admit it to God and to ourselves. And here's the, again, the part that most people get stuck on and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. It's to the other human being or to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs that many people get stuck on. The scripture tells us in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins to Jesus, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And many people, whether it is a an addictive uh, behavior and or uh, something else that they're looking to get healing and recovery from, they often would, you know, confess when they when they've fallen into that sin or fallen into that action. They would confess to Jesus, Jesus, I've done once again fallen into that sin. I once again have fallen short of your glory in this particular area. I I need your forgiveness, and I need, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm uh, repentive of sorts uh, to that particular sin and action. Many times, and the Lord Jesus will forgive you in that moment, and He'll make you in right standing with Him, and uh, it will, you know, you will be uh, as if you've never sinned in that uh, particular area before. And so that is good, but there is something even better, even better than that, and that is that the action, the behavior, the sin can change and be rooted out of your life and it be gone forever. And I think, again, many people don't know the secret combination, if you will, to that. And I want to share that with you today through an acronym called SHARE. And I'm going to go through that and each bit uh, of it now, and then we'll cover it and break it down in each uh, little bit of uh, information there. But SHARE uh, starts with S, step out from the shadows. Uh, Then H would be hope and healing. A would be for acceptance and accountability. R would be for rest and recovery. And then finally, the E would be for experience and encounters. So share. I believe if you begin to open up your life and open up your heart and open up about some of your hurts, your hangups, and your habits, and not only share it with the Lord, what I think is so important, but begin to share it with others. That, again, is the part that many people uh, struggle with and because of shame, uh, because of fear of judgment, because of uh, a fear that, that they will not have a place of belonging anymore. But I believe and I truly know that the only time that you would truly be fully healed and really begin that process of recovery and restoration is if you do this next step, step number five, uh, not only confessing to God, but then confessing to others your your sins and your hurts and your hangups and your habits. It's when you begin that, that you really begin to walk in God's fullness. So again, step number five, we admit it to God, to ourselves. Sometimes that's a struggle for some. And then the again, the most challenging part for many is to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. Let's take a look again at 1 John. Uh, chapter 1 and verses 5 through 9, it says, This message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and walk, uh, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live in the truth. But, here it is, but if we walk in light as he is the in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all our sins. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And verse number nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. And again, those that get into habitual cycles 
of a particular sin or a particular struggle or a particular addiction often uh, do that. They will confess to Jesus, Lord, I'm sorry, I once again fell into this particular sin. I once again stumbled in this particular area. Please forgive me. The guilt, the condemnation is, is just heavy. Please take that away from me. And the Lord Jesus being uh, just and, and being faithful and being loving, yes, he will forgive you of that sin. But he wants so much more for you. So I believe, again, to go to the next level of recovery and restoration and be totally healed and totally recovered from that particular area of your life, you have to do, without a doubt, the very next step. And that is confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. That comes from James 5.16. I'm going to read it one more time. Confess your sins to each other, not just to God, not just to yourself, but to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. Again, many people struggle with that, and that really becomes a place where uh, many people uh, don't move forward from, but I believe it's something that you can uh, overcome and, and it can uh, be accomplished. You just have to find the right place and the right people to share that with. Uh, when there comes an opportunity for you to open up, it could be at a Bible study, it could be at a life recovery group or some other form of recovery group, a celebrate recovery group. Some some group that is focused on people's lives being restored and healed and recovery it could be a church Bible study or it could just be a trusted friend. You know, the Bible says not to cast your pearls before swine. And uh, I don't think, you know, you want to just tell anybody this, but use wisdom and use godly counsel and ask God. Who should I share this with? Yes, it could be just one other person. It could be, um, you know, your spouse. It could be uh, someone from your church, your local community. Someone that you feel is a trusted partner that you can open up and begin to confess your sins again to each other. And then they can pray for you because the Bible says we can pray over that and pray for that person. And then the scripture has promised us that you may be healed. And so there is that promise that you will be healed if again and restored and that recovery process will begin if then you confess your sins all one to another and pray for each other that you may be healed. There's a power and accountability, which we'll talk more about in a moment. It's hard to find a trusted friend when you're in crisis, someone who's been there and understands, but who also has the training and skill to give you practical help. Family, friends, and churches want to help, but often they're not equipped to care for those dealing with problems like addiction and pornography and fidelity, anger, depression. New Life Ministries is here to provide help and hope in life's hardest places. We're not focused on making people feel better. We're focused on helping people do the work that will help them be better. At New Life, we have resources available to help you, like books, DVDs, CDs, workshops, and our network of licensed counselors. If you need help, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and begin your new life today. Welcome back. You know, confession is done in community, and when we've been hiding things and looking the other way inside of ourselves, we discover there's a new way, and it's a way of being open. And that's when relationships become redemptive, when we start to be open in a safe, healthy place in a redemptive relationship. Let's listen to Daniel. Well, let's look at our acronym here, and uh, let's break it down. Step out from the shadows. S. So when we think about the acronym SHARE, that first letter is S, and that means step out from the shadows. Often we hide in shame, the shadows of shame and uh, condemnation that the enemy heaps on us, and often we heap on ourselves because, again, we repeat that cycle of sin over and over. But the moment you share and begin to open up and confess your sin to someone else or to a group, begin to step out of the shadows. Remember, God is light, and in him there is no darkness. Uh, so darkness it can often be uh, affiliated and associated with sin. 
So when you know the only place that sin can continue to grow and continue to have a grip on us is when we're in the shadows away from the light. But when you step out of the shadows, and the way you do that is, again, opening up to someone and saying, you know what, I'm struggling with this addictive behavior. I'm struggling with this particular sin. I'm struggling here. I need some help. I need some healing. And you step out and you bring it into the light. Not only do you bring it up to God, but you bring it out to others. And you step out from the shadows and into the light. That sin begins to dissipate. That sin begins to to die, essentially. Again, sin could only grow in the shadows. But when you bring it into the light of love and the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you bring it before others, again, that is where the healing begins and the recovery truly begins. The Bible tells us, that you are chosen a race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, it says, a people of his possession, that you belong to God, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who has called you. Here it is, out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Many people, again, don't want to do this initial step of sharing their story because of shame, because of, of other the fear of others judging them or the others condemning them or, or being ostracized from their community or their, their, their friend group or their family. And really, they'd rather live in the shadows of shame. But when you step out of the shadows of shame and you bring it out from the darkness and into the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ, the healing really begins. And so we look at the next letter, of the SHARE acronym, and that is H. H stands for hope and healing. When you have uh, that opportunity to step back into the light, it is almost like you could breathe again. When you are able to share and, and open up and maybe tell another person for the first time, it's like a, a breath like you have been holding your breath for so long. And you may know what I'm talking about. You, know, you have that ability to open up and share, and it's like you, you can breathe again. There's a saying that you can live, you know, a few minutes without oxygen, uh, or excuse me, without food or without water. Uh, you can, you know, maybe live a minute without oxygen, but you cannot live one second without hope. See, hope is what carries us to the very next moment. It keeps us moving forward. Without hope, uh, in the darkness, we we can't be all that God has called us to be. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 17, 14, Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved, for you are the one I praise. So the Father wants to heal and restore and recover you from, again, whatever your hurt, hang-up, or habit is. And he can, and he will. Uh, and uh, that hope gives you the assurance that, that the healing process has begun and, and that God is doing a deep work in you. But you, again, have to step out of the shadows uh, and, and confess that sin and open it up to not only to God, not only to yourself, but again, sharing it with another person that you uh, you know know that it's a safe person and someone that you can trust. Um, the next part of the acronym is A. A is for acceptance and accountability. Again, James 5.16, I'm going to read it one more time. Confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, and so that you may be healed. Uh, so when we uh, finally open up, we step out of the shadows, we have that, that breath of hope in our lives that this addiction and this struggle will not have grips on us for our entire life, but we will be healed. And we, we see the healing begin to, we see a little bit of maybe a more joy coming back, a little more of God's peace, a little bit more of God's power on our lives. And we begin to sense that healing taking place. We want that process to continue. And when we think about the word acceptance, we finally realize that, that I'm not the only one who struggled with this. Now, maybe to some degree or another, someone else has struggled with the exact same thing that you have fought with maybe your whole life. But at the end of the day, when you realize that when you bring it onto the light, you know it's it's not just me. There's others who have struggled with something similar. And uh, there's that acceptance of a community of healing that takes place. And you you do realize that you're not alone. That's again another another great truth of the recovery process. So when you step into that step number five, you realize I am not alone. There's others that are struggling with this. And that place of acceptance and belonging takes place. And in that place of acceptance, really a place of 
is a place of healing and a place of recovery because other people will challenge you as you continue to be healed and begin to be restored. And, and it really is a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, accountability is another component of this SHARE acronym. Um, so acceptance, you, you find out your place, your community, and your uh, tribe, as someone said, and uh, your, your people that will walk you through this. Um, but accountability is another part. So the confession and the profession is not just a one-time uh, event where you open up, but it is something that the check-in takes place. Uh, how are you doing on that uh, today? How has this been You know, a struggle for you this past week? I know you've been having a stressful week. So tell me how this particular area has been going for you. When someone is accountable with another person or we, even within a group, an accountability group, there is such power in that because that keeps you out of the shadows because in the shadows is isolation and in the shadows, sin can grow. And in the shadows, really death takes place. But when you bring it all into the marvelous light of God's power and have another person there, uh, you know, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. And that's really all accountability is. It's, it's sharpening you. It's building you up. It's keeping you moving forward. And uh, there's no there's no guilt or judgment. And you may stumble and you may fall. But uh, someone that comes alongside you and lifts you up and, and puts you back uh, and connected to God and keeps you moving in the right direction, there's nothing more powerful than that. So acceptance, accountability. Let's talk about R. R is for rest and recovery. When you finally, again, uh, bring it into the light, there's a peace that comes with that. You don't always have to be looking over your back, wondering who's going to catch you in the shadows. No, you have a rest about you that you can uh, just rest easily, knowing that this is out in the light, that this is open, and that and that that God is working on this. And you can be more honest and transparent, and 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 trust can be restored not only with you and God, or with with yourself, but with others. There's a power in a place of rest. Because in the place of rest, real recovery can happen. First Peter 5.10 says, though God, through God's grace, he will restore. And after you've suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you into his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore and confirm strength and establish you. So God himself will begin that healing restoration process and working together with you and others through that action step of accountability, he will begin his deep, deep work in you. And God, God has promised you. But again, there's such a peace when you don't always, again, have to be looking all over and be worried about who's going to catch you. Now, your, your, your soul is at rest. And in that place of rest, true recovery can help, can happen. And another word I like is the word restoration. Uh, restoration is making something better than it ever was before. I often think about an old car that is left in back in the junkyard and, and it's been there to, to rot and, and rust, but someone had a vision, someone had a, an idea to bring it back to life. And often those who bring cars back to life and restore them often make them better than they ever were before, putting a greater engine, a better paint job, some better wheels, and they make this great, great uh, new car all over again. And so God is in the God uh, of, of, of restoration. He's a God of restoration, not only rest, not only recovery, but restoration. And I know God can do that work in you. The final letter is the letter E. And that stands for experience and encounters. The Bible tells us to surrender to God, resist the devil, and he will run. And then it says, come near to God, and he will draw near to you. There's something that takes place when, again, you come out from the shadows of shame and the shadows of sin, and you open up your heart uh, to others, and you said, this is something I need some help with. Uh, and I, you, there's that hope and that recovery that's taking place. These experiences that you begin to take place, you, you see life through a different lens when you're uh, able to just be open and freely to share your struggles, your your habits, your hangups, and 
uh, your hurts, when you are able to openly share, you experience life in a different manner, in a different light. You know, maybe you become a little more joyful, uh, hopefully a lot more joyful. Uh, more love and compassion is freely flowing from you. Uh, just the way that you experience life is so different when you open up and share uh, your story. Uh, people, again, uh, will be so appreciative of it. And guess what? They'll have that opportunity then to experience uh, share their experience and share what they've gone through. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful connection there. But the E really is about those encounters, those encounters with God, because when he steps in that marvelous light, when he steps in and begins the healing and, and, and sh restoring and recovery process, those encounters are so important. Those you'll crave those more than you craved any other addictive uh, behavior that you had, or or craved any other habit that you had. Uh, you'll crave a new encounter with God, uh, and you'll realize that there's no high like the Most High, and you'll want that more than anything else. And so, uh, in that place of in, encounters with the Most High God, with the light of the world, you again will begin to be transformed into all that God has called you to be. One of my favorite scriptures is this. It comes uh, from first, uh, excuse me, Philippians one six. It says, "Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will be faithful. Yes, be faithful to complete that good work that he has begun, even until the day of Christ Jesus' return." So God has begun a good work in you, and he's going to continue to heal you, and he's going to continue to restore you. But you have to take that next step. Step number five. You have to. Open up, not only confess it to God, he is faithful and just to forgive you, but you have to uh, confess it to another human being, the exact nature of your wrongdoings. Don't, don't just share parts of it, share all of it, the exact nature of your wrongs. And God will heal you, God will restore you. Um, I'm excited uh, that you are on this journey of recovery. Don't stop, keep moving forward. And share your experience. Step out from the shadows. Receive that hope. Receive that acceptance. Receive that accountability. And enter a place of rest and recovery. And then your whole life experience will definitely change. And I pray God gives you great encounters with him. Because where God is, there is life. And there is healing. Thanks for taking a moment to hear a little bit about step number five. Keep going through all the steps. And you will see God do a mighty work. God bless you. Welcome back. Well, I'm so glad you watched today. And we're talking about steps. Now, here's a step for you. It's a big one. How about pick up that phone? It's not really a step. It's a pickup. But anyway, it's a movement forward to pick up the phone. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Let us help you with some resources from Life Recovery. Find a group for you. Whatever you need. You know, Life Recovery, it's not just for addicts. It's for everyone. Find out at 1-800-NEW-LIFE how it could be for you. Thanks for joining us for Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. We hope this program has helped you integrate God's truth and wisdom into your recovery journey. This program is brought to you by New Life Ministries, and it's your support that keeps this program on the air. When you contact us for any reason, be sure to let us know that you watch on NRB. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to liferecoverytoday.net. Please join us again next week for more Life Recovery Today.